Welcome back, scientists. I am Mr. Steyer, and this is Mr. Steyer's Classroom. Today, you are going to think like a scientist and construct an argument. Welcome back, scientists. <clears throat> Today, you are going to construct an argument that plants have internal and external structures that function to support survival growth, and reproduction. Last time we were together, last couple of times we've been together, we have been talking about the internal and the external structures of a wild rose. If you haven't watched those videos, I really encourage you to go back and watch those because that information is going to be really important for the work that we're going to do today. So we talked about that wild rose in our last couple of sessions, and today we're talking about the buttercup. So I need you to remember some of those things that we talked about from our previous sessions together. And we learned about those internal and external structures. And I want you to think about just for a second, and you can pause the video if you need, some of those specific structures that we talked about. You might remember that we talked about how the flower is to help the rose reproduce or the stem is there to transport water and nutrients. The petal attracts insects. The roots soak up water and nutrients from the soil. The thorns are on the rows to protect the plant and the leaf helps the plant to produce food. And those are things that you can remember from our previous discussion, from our previous lessons. Well, Today, what we're going to do is we're going to be exploring what are the similarities between the buttercup and the wild rose. Again, take this moment, pause the video, and as you look at the buttercup on the screen, what visual similarities do you see between this buttercup and the wild rose that we talked about previously. I'm sure that you noticed that there's a stem here, there are roots, there's leaves, there's petals, there's one or more pistil and stamens. You may even notice that those petals are similarly shaped to the rose. Okay, so now we identified what is similar. We obviously have to ask the next compare and contrast question and what is different? So what differences do you see between the buttercup and the wild rose from our previous lessons? Again, take a couple of moments, pause the video, think about what we learned previously. What similarities or differences do you see? And some of you are right. You clearly noticed that the buttercup has much shorter roots. You may have noticed that the petals are a different color than the rose. You may even have noticed that the leaves here, they're, they're shaped differently than that wild rose that we studied previously. And so you know that a buttercup plant and a wild rose look very different. But a buttercup, like a wild rose, has external and internal structures that help it to survive. So this is where you are going to think like a scientist. And remember, you are a scientist here. You have to be specific. You have to be critical. You have to be precise. You have to make certain that the language that you're using is to prove what you're trying to prove. So we are going to look here and we can see that we have four tasks today. We need to list, we need to compare, we need to construct an argument, and we need to generalize. These four things, when we build them together, they're going to help us to build an argument so we can prove things not just about Buttercup here or the Wild Rose, but we might be able to create a generalization of a proof for all plants in general, and maybe even specifically all flowers. 
So first, we're going to look at our list. And the first thing we're going to do in our list is we're going to ask ourselves, what are the in external structures that we're labeling on this, on this buttercup plant? And what are the internal structures that we can label here? So we'll take some time, we'll add some labels to our images on our activity slide, and we'll take some time and we'll write some words into our list on that second activity slide we have this week. All right, step two, we need to compare. So what we're going to do is we are going to compare the buttercup plants structures to the wild roses structures that we have seen previously. So we talked about this earlier. Now let's really put these two things side by side and think about what did we learn previously? What did we learn now? What is in fact the same? And again, we're gonna take some time to go onto that second activity slide and write some of our comparisons down. And again, be specific. We know that both of these things are flowers. So if you say one is a flower, the other is a flower, that is not specific enough. Be specific. What do you notice about the shape of the leaves of the rose plant? What do you notice about the shape of the leaves of, the, of buttercup here? Make certain that we're specific about our comparisons so we can understand like a scientist what is going on. All right, step three, construct an argument. So you are going to write an explanation arguing how, as with the wild rose, the structures help the buttercup plant to grow, to survive, or to reproduce. So think about what you know. How are you using what you knew from a previous lesson to make a new proof here to start to construct an argument that you could use every time you're talking about a flowering plant. All right, step four, you are going to generalize. This is the point where we're going to take all of the work we've done and we're gonna put it together here and we're actually going to write a summary. We're gonna write a summary explaining how the structures of the buttercup plant and the wild rose help them to survive. All right, so we have our four steps done in order for us to construct an argument. So the first thing we did was we just listed. We listed the things that we know about a rose and the things that we know about a buttercup. We know they're both flowers. We know they have internal and external structures. All right, the second thing we did is we compared. And that is the point where you're asking yourselves things like, are there more differences or similarities between the buttercup and the wild rose? So look at that data that you collected. Look at that list that you made. Look at that information you put into that activity slide. Are there more differences or are there more similarities? All right, now you're constructing an argument. So you asked yourself, why do you think the buttercup and the wild rose have many of the same structures? This is where you're starting to create that argument. Why do the buttercup and the wild rose have many of the same structures? All right. And then that, again, that fourth part, that generalization, where again, you, as you took your notes, as you wrote your summary, you asked yourself questions like, what can I conclude about the external and internal structures of, a plant, of plants? Of all plants, what can I conclude about all plants? Can I make a generalization that all plants would be similar? And the last thing that we asked ourselves in that generalization, in that summary, is what ways do I think like a scientist when I complete this activity? So what ways are you actually thinking like a scientist? Make sure that you take some time to complete this activity. 
Think critically, think carefully, make sure that when you write those arguments, you have complete sentences, make sure that you have all of the information that you need in order to make the best possible argument, which then can become a proof that you can use every time something is, through, is true. I am Mr. Steyer. This is Mr. Steyer's classroom. Thank you for being here today, scientists. Have a great day. Work hard. And remember to always think like a scientist. Bye.